reach the third stage of IBM, all the good plans or lack of planning you've done since your diagnosis comes to life. Hi, Jerry here again for you IB Myositis YouTube channel viewers. Thank you for selecting this episode and all my videos dedicated to anyone interested in inclusion body myositis. And stick around, I'll have another bonus tip near the end of this video that might help you in your battle with this muscle disease. I've mentioned in an earlier video that the progression of IBM accelerates when reaching a mid-teen functional rating scale score or what I refer to as stage 3. This video is for people planning for their unfortunate future and those nearing or already in stage 3 of inclusion body myositis. When your functional rating scale score reaches stage 3, transferring from one position to another is usually very difficult and can be very dangerous and you better have a transfer device plan in place. I almost waited too long, unfairly hoping my caregiver would not only steady me during a transfer, but also be able to catch me if I started to fall. I don't care how little you weigh or how strong you think your caregiver is, your caregiver may not be able to react fast enough to catch you and may injure themselves when trying to support you during a fall. With your safety and that of your caregiver in mind, many IBMers resort to one of the three types of patient lifts to use in safe transfers, a standard type lift, a sit-to-stand lift, or an overhead track lift. If you act well ahead of when you need a lift, you can get a prescription from your doctor and attempt asking Medicare and your insurance for financial assistance. Their assistance will probably be in the form of an equipment rental of a patient lift and might not be for a sit-to-stand type lift or overhead track model. E0635 is a valid 2018 HCPCS code for patient lift, electric with seat or sling, or just generally a patient lift for short, used in the rental of a DME lift. I have a great wife and caregiver and appreciate everything she does for me as well as help received from my daughter, son-in-law, and grandson. Since I'm totally dependent on them now, I did not want to add burden on my caregivers by selecting a manual or hydraulic type of lift or subject them to the rigors of using a transfer board. I also wanted the quickest transfer lift for times when needing a transfer might be for an urgent trip to the bathroom. Your diaphragm muscles weaken during the later stage time frame and I'm sure you stage 3 IBMers know exactly what I mean. When you gotta go, you gotta go. There are certain advantages to all three types of lifts, and your living quarters and installed cost may be the final determining factor in which one you select. The overhead track trolley lift did not fit well with the vaulted ceiling in our living room and was not compatible with the arched hallway openings, nor was it in my available personal budget. After doing a lot of research and thinking, I decided I wanted a sit-to-stand type of lift because of its smaller footprint that seemed best in my home application. I found several manufacturers of sit-to-stand lifts. Invocare, Stand Aid of Iowa, Lumex by Graham Fields, Best Care, Drive Medical, Lyco by Hillrom, Rhino by Tough Care, and others. Stand Aid of Iowa also makes a drivable sit-to-stand model in their product offering. There are three types of sit-to-stand lifts to choose from, manual, hydraulic pump, and electric. The manual type uses your own strength to get to a near standing position, which would work for stage 1 or stage 2 IBMers, but I immediately ruled out the manual type because of my lack of hand and arm strength in my stage 3 condition. The hydraulic version would require my caregiver to pump a lever that generates hydraulic pressure to raise the lift mechanism, but might be cumbersome and more time consuming to get me transferred. The electric version easily raises and lowers the lift arms with a press of a button on the controller. The disadvantage with the electric lift is that it's battery powered, so it does require some periodic charging 
were not being used, but figured we could certainly live with that disadvantage. In a search of my area's Craigslist ads, I didn't react fast enough to get a like-new sit-to-stand lift available at about half the cost of a new lift. I also found a used one at our local medical equipment closet, but it had a bent caster wheel and parts were no longer available for this older model made by Invacare, so I passed on this lift too. I ended up purchasing a new Lumix model LF2020 electric lift off the showroom floor of a local medical equipment vendor after getting a substantial discount when mentioning some lower prices from other medical equipment suppliers seen online for the same model. I paid only a small premium over the least expensive online price but figured it best to support a local vendor and it was already assembled and would be delivered the next day and included a new lift sling. I also had the chance to try it out before purchasing it to assure myself and caregiver that this lift would do the job we wanted it to do. The Lumex model LF2020 is an electric type of sit-to-stand lift that has a weight capacity rating of 400 pounds and a lift height to 66 inches. The legs can be adjusted by pressing on one side or the other of the foot pedal located at the end side of the lift. Some manufacturers models commanding a higher price have an electrically operated leg adjustment. On the Lumex model I purchased when the legs are in the narrow position, it is only 25.5 inches wide, narrow enough to get through any standard doorway, but also spreads to 37.8 inches to fit around most chairs and all power chairs. I need my caregiver to lift my legs and feet onto the lift's foot plate as I can no longer do that myself. The Lumex sling is very wide and supports my 6 foot 2 inch 190 pound frame very well. The Lumex sling is sized by your chest dimensions available in small, medium, large and extra large. This lift can be used to transfer a patient from room to room in your house or from bed to toilet and back again. Because the sling surrounds your chest, your caregiver has access for lowering your pants before toileting. So your question might be, can the sit to stand lift be used to pick a fallen IBMer off the floor? That answer is, I'm not sure. It's not something I plan on testing soon. I did find a huge positive of having a lift in my house. I get to sit in chairs again that I haven't sat in in many years. Now for that bonus tip. In my last video I mentioned using a product called a phone lasso to help IBMers handle their phones. I found another use for it as an assist while on the toilet by attaching a lasso to my bidet's remote control. I then hang it on a hook for a much easier retrieval with my depleted hands and arms and hanging it up when not using it. Attaching a coiled tether to it also helps eliminate dropping the remote or assists in retrieving it if I do. Please remember that my choices are just that, my choices. Your living environment, financial situation, and personal preferences need to steer your selections. 
Just make sure that you have the right devices in place at the right time to help eliminate injury to you, the IBMer, or your caregiver. I'd like to thank Dr. Kevin Dooley for featuring this IB Myositis YouTube channel on his Cure IBM website blog. Please support the Cure IBM movement any way you can. I will leave a link to his blog below in the info section of this video. I hope you enjoyed this episode and watching my adventures with IBM. It's not easy for any of us. Please press the thumbs up if you like this type of information and hit the subscribe button to be notified about future episodes. Stay strong my friends. Happy 2019.